Hello everyone and welcome to our visualbasic.net programming tutorials. In this video we're going to look at iteration and more specifically look at the for loop. Now iteration is a word that we use and we throw it around computer science and we don't really consider what that actually means. Iteration means repetition and repetition is all about looping and repeating because computer scientists are very lazy people so we don't really want to write that much code so what we do is we create code and then we iterate over the code repeating it many times so all we need to do is head over to Visual Studio 2019 select our language of Visual Basic we're going to create a Windows form app.net framework program and this is going to be called iteration make sure it's saved in the right place I'm just going to stick it on my desktop and then I create the project and there we go there's my form and I'm going to add a few things to this now I'm going to add a button I'm going to need a text box so I type in text in my toolbox so the text box there and I'm going to need a label as well just to give that some meaning and to output this I think I'm going to use a list box so select list box as well and there we go okay so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go around and name these things so the first thing I've got here is a button so remember when I'm giving these things names in the properties box in the bottom right hand corner we start with the objects name so the abbreviation of button is BTN and this is going to be called BTN OK because it's an OK button that allows the user to enter what they want. So I also put OK in here. And you'll see the text change to OK. The text box, we only change the name in the text box. I'm going to change that to TXT number because that's going to be the number the user is going to enter. And this program, if you've not worked out yet, is a multiplication program using iteration. So the label here, I could change the name, but I'm not going to program the label, so I don't really need to change that. I just need to change the text property. So I'm going to let the user enter something from 2 to 12 there, and it will produce the relevant times tables for that. I'll just make my boxes a little bit smaller. And there we go. So all we need to do is we need to create the event here. So if I double click the OK button, it will create the BTN OK underscore click event in my code window. And if I ever lost this code window, I can always get it back by using the little arrow and we'll get back to the code window there in the Solution Explorer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating some variables. So this should be nothing new to us now and I'm going to have my number as an integer I'm going to have my index you'll see where this comes in a little bit later on as an integer also I'll also have in there my result that's also an integer because when I multiply numbers together it's result it results in a whole number so that means we need integer so if I say number equals txt number dot text. I want the text property from the text box number to be assigned into the number variable. That's what that means right there. After that, I can start my iteration. I'll just space these out so you can see exactly what's going on here. But I want to now multiply the number through the times tables. So a for loop is a static loop that loops a specific number of times. So if I say for index equals two, that means that I'm gonna assign the local variable index the number two. And I'm gonna loop to 12. So this loop is gonna move from two to three to four to five to six to seven to eight to nine to 10 to 11 and to 12. As soon as I press enter, the code is automatically generated for me. And you'll see this next part that closes our loop and increments the local variable by one so every time it hits next it will increment index by one increment just means going up 
And I could put there index on the end of the for just to make it a little bit clearer, but your program will still work without that there. And what I'll do is I'll say the result is given the value of index, which starts off at two multiplied by the number. Okay, the number is what the user specifies and that's what multiplication table the user wants. And then all I need to do is output that. So I've got a list box out there, LST. List box one dot items dot add and then in brackets is what I want to add to it. Now if you think about it, when I'm writing my multiplication tables out, I'm going to have the number the user specified and I'm going to have an X because that's the multiplication, isn't it? I'll have lowercase actually. Multiplied by and then I need and the index. So if I pick the five times table, it'll be five multiplied by two. After that, ampersand again, equals, and then I need and my result. So what you can see here is the loop looping from 12, two to 12, it will put in there, the result is given the value of the index, which starts at two, but goes to three when it hits this line, then to four, then to five, then to six, all the way up to 12, multiplied by the number the, the user specified up here. So let's give it a go and have a look what happens. There we go. So if I enter the number five in there, I press OK, it'll do my five times table. Okay, if you wanted one in there as well, if you wanted to produce one, we can do that. But all we need to do is change the two to one, and then we run it again. And we see what happens. So I put in five again, I press OK, I've now got five. So five multiplied by one is five, five by two is 10, 15, 20, 25, all the way to the 12 times table. And there's nothing to limit you with this. We can, we can go to 120 if we wanted to, if we were being a bit silly. I can produce all the results there. I'll do the five times table again. And there we go. So it will produce that all the way up to 120. And I can change the numbers in there. I can put eight. Look what happens now. It adds it onto the end of the list box. Really, I should clear my list box every time I do this. But there we are. So it'll go up to whatever number I specify. Now we've seen so far that every time we hit the next index, we can increment by one, but we're not limited specifically to just looping and going up by one every time. The for loop also comes with something called a step as well. And we can specify how many we want to step up by, or we can specify how many we want to step down by, okay? So you can you can put what, what, whatever number you want in there. Um, so if we just step up in twos, for example, let's just see what happens this time when somebody types in a number. So put five in. So you'll notice now that I go up by one, three, five, seven, nine, and 11, okay? The next one after this would be 13, which is outside the bounds of 12, so it stops there. And uh, also, I can swap these round if I wanted to. I could say 12 to one, and I could minus two there, which means it would step down in twos. I run this program again, put five in, and you'll notice it goes from 12 down by two, down by two, down by two, down by two, and down by two again. This, the next one will be zero, but that's outside the bounds again, isn't it? So it will stop there. So step comes with the for loop to allow you to step up or step down by whichever amount that you like. And that's it for our first video on iteration. Join us in the next one where we'll continue our journey further.